Hello everybody, and welcome to the dawn of a new era for the channel. So, we're going to be doing a lot of coverage of a little game called Heroes of the Storm, and a lot of guides. So, you know, right off the bat, if you're not interested in Heroes of the Storm, that's fine. It's not like we're only going to be doing Heroes content. It's going to remain the same kind of content on the channel that we're currently doing, plus Heroes of the Storm. It's not going to take the place of anything, because on our current schedule, it's just going to overlap with stuff. So, say, Alien Isolation comes out on Mondays and Tuesdays. Maybe there'll be a guide with an Alien video on Mondays. Or maybe there'll be, a, you know, a Heroes guide on... A Thursday when we have Dragon Age, right? So there's there's nothing that's going to be replaced by Heroes of the Storm content, and I wanted to just make that abundantly clear from the beginning. However, there is going to be quite a bit of this coming out. So, as of tomorrow, uh, which is the 13th of January, 2015, the closed beta starts, and the closed beta is going to let a ton of people come and play Heroes of the Storm. If you're not signed up, to be opted in to the beta on your battle.net account, you should probably go do that. And I'll explain, you know, here's the storm in a second here and why I'm covering and all that stuff. But I just wanted to let you know that you could get in and start playing pretty quick here. So it's not like you're going to be seeing content on the channel that you're not going to have access to as far as gaming wise. You could pretty much just go play this and it's free to play too. So it's not like you have to pay anything to get it when the game actually does release. So later on down the line, if you become interested in the game, you can always just jump in and start playing kind of like Hearthstone, right? Now, what is Heroes of the Storm? Heroes of the Storm is just like all the other hero brawlers out there. So like Dota, and League of Legends and Heroes of New Earth, but Heroes of the Storm is different enough to justify your time. And the reason I say that is because on, let's say, League of Legends and Dota, you have pretty much the same map in both of those games. In fact, the map is identical in a lot of ways to the other. So, like, the League of Legends map is pretty much the same as the Dota map. And all of this obviously comes from the original Dota uh, mod, or not mod, but I guess custom map in Warcraft 3, and there was even ones behind that, or before that, with uh, with the StarCraft editor, so this is a, it's a long-running genre that was built by the players of the games, the people who are making custom maps, and that's really cool that uh, an entire genre can be spawned out of that. In fact, you, you know, you could pretty much argue Tower Defense was very similar to that. You know, Tower Defense got really, really popular in the Warcraft and Starcraft editors. And because of that, uh, a huge generation of people who had never played Tower Defense before are suddenly playing a lot of Tower Defense games. And I, I, was, I would argue without Warcraft 3 and Starcraft, uh, the original map editors, you would never be able to have things like Dungeon Defenders, because that genre would never have progressed. It's kind of the same thing with this new healer, hero brawler thing. And Heroes of the Storm is the next iteration on that, I feel. Uh, the reason why is because each map is different. Each map has its own objectives. There's multiple maps. It throws you into a random one, so you're, you can't necessarily choose the same map over and over. And it's just part of a map pool. So you got to kind of know different strategies per map. And every time you play, it's going to be a bit different than the last. Unlike in League of Legends and Dota, where that map is just done to death. And every time you play, and despite League of Legends having a couple other maps available, like barely anybody plays those, right? They're all focused on the 5v5, three lane maps. And in Heroes of the Storm, sometimes you don't have three lanes. Sometimes you have two. Sometimes the objective uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be in the lanes all that much. And in fact, I think uh, Heroes of the Storm does a really good job of just throwing you into action. You know, right at the beginning of a game, there is action going on and you're not necessarily sitting there waiting for... You know, ugh, like you got to get to level 10 so that way you could get your ultimate abilities and all that stuff. It's like you're, it, there's no long laning phase. It's pretty much all team fights from the beginning, which, uh, in my opinion, throws a little bit more skill into the mix because you don't have like two game styles going on. You have one where it's you're you're having to deal with the enemy team. You're having to coordinate your team and you're having to do these objectives on the map because the objectives are really important. But this game isn't uh, any better or worse than Dota and League of Legends. It's just different, which is why I said that it, it deserves your attention. It deserves your time, at least to try it, because 
uh, once you get into it, it's really, really fun. They do a good job at Blizzard making fun. I don't know how they do it with many of their games. They're just, they're just naturally fun when you're playing it. And in a game like this, typically about 10 minutes in, you know which way the game is going. Are you going to lose or are you going to win? And when you know you're going to lose, the game isn't that much fun anymore, right? And in League of Legends, at about 20 minutes in, you're like, it's time to surrender. We're doing terribly here. We're not going to win this game. And in Dota, it's even worse. If you're behind, it's really hard to catch back up. But, uh, you know, well, skilled players are able to do that, especially pro teams. But for the average player, it's really hard to catch back up. In Heroes of the Storm, you have comebacks all the time. This is a perfect game in the background where... Uh, we were behind, we were losing, we come back and we win because we just, you know, outplay them in certain parts and we're able to get ahead and we play the objective and uh, that definitely helps our momentum. In fact, I would say once we did the objective for the first time, it, uh, it, it switched the game around for us pretty heavily. And I like that. Sometimes the game can be a little frustrating, you know, and the fact that you are winning and suddenly the en enemy team slingshots around and starts winning. Uh, the, the comebacks are definitely real in this, and there is no surrender button for that. Uh, so you can't actually just, like, give up halfway through. I mean, I guess you could just stop playing, but at the end of the day, the games are much shorter than also, you know, in League of Legends and Dota. In Dota, you're looking at 40-minute games on average. In League of Legends, it's anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes on average, and uh, there's oftentimes more times than that, so you could have, like, a, an hour-long game, and it's really hard to dedicate that, but in Heroes of the Storm, you're looking at uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes on average. So you get in and you get out, and you don't necessarily have to deal with the, the enemy team, and they're adding ranked mode and a ton of other stuff, and it's just coming out of alpha, and the fact that the game is so polished already is, is astonishing to me. So, what are we going to cover? What am I going to do? Well, I need, I need some feedback from you guys. Uh, if you're a new player to these types of games, which chances are uh, you have played one of these before, but if you're a new player, I want to hear from you. I want to know what you would want to see the most. What, what kind of knowledge would you want to get out of a guide? You know, like, not necessarily just how to play better, but what little things, like maybe how to maneuver your character, how to deal with the camera, how to set up uh, keybinds to um, set up screen regions so you can, like, set your screen to you know, have three regions that it's bound to, uh, you know, with certain buttons like control one, two, and three. Uh, you can like go to the middle, the top, and the bottom lane real quick without having to click on the mini map or stuff like that. Like what little things would you want to know uh, with how to get better at the game? Because I, I want to know those things because I've, I've been playing this genre for a while now and I don't necessarily, like I'm not in tune with what the heck new players necessarily want. So I, I'm really curious uh, with you know, what exactly I can I can make guides there for. But I'm also going to have standard guides. You know, I'm going to have uh, guides for each map. Heck, there's a new map releasing with the closed beta, uh, which puts the pool up to like four or five, five maps, I think. Cause, yeah, I think five maps, maybe six. Uh, but, you know, a, a guide for each of the objectives there and how to deal with the map and different strategies that you can use, different timings on the maps, right? You know, like different objectives happen at different times or within a time range uh, effectively. So... You know what to what to expect with that. I'm going to do character guides of how to play each hero, and those will come a bit slower than the rest of the guides because I have a way that I'm going to do it that I feel is just fair to everybody. Which is, I'm not going to do a guide for a character unless I've gotten it to level 10, and that's anywhere from 50 to 80 games, uh, depending on if you have a boost or not and uh, how many games you're winning. If you have a, an XP boost, it's probably more like 30 to 40 games uh, to get to level 10. But once you hit level 10, you could get the master skin, and that requires 10,000 gold, which is a significant amount of gold. You could, you could get that within a week if you did all your dailies and you won a ton of games and you had a boost on, but um, anytime I'm going to make a guide, I'm going to have the master skin for it. So that's going to be my, my little thing. Like I, just, I feel like in order to make an effective guide, I'll need to have done that. The other thing that I want to do, uh, as far as guides is concerned, it's just like little things, like uh, like I said earlier, like how to maneuver your camera. Like I'm not the best at it, and I'm working on a few ways to get better with it. But you know, little things like that, um, how to communicate to your team effectively of what you want, uh, how to not sound like a jerk, which is also, by the way, a plus to Heroes of the Storm because a lot of the community is surrounding it is like the uh, StarCraft players and some Hearthstone players. 
but definitely the, the Warcraft and Starcraft it, people are definitely in on it, which means that the community isn't as volatile as it could be. And I appreciate uh, a lot of the people that I get to play with. They're just, you know, if you're losing, they don't necessarily go, oh, well, you got, you, you know, you suck. It's all your guys' fault. And when you see those people, you typically know, yeah, you probably were a Dota player or a League of Legends player. I, I understand your frustration, but it's okay. This is going to be over in five minutes, and you can get on with your life. You don't have to be so attached. And most of the heroes of the Storm players uh, know that. But that could just be because it's in alpha at the moment. And when it goes into be or closed beta, uh, that may change. I don't know. But, uh, you know, little things like how to do better etiquette uh, for these kind of games, um, the different... Uh, acronyms that you may need to know just stuff like that little little things that will make you better at the game in general and i think i think knowing those things um you know from years of playing these kind of genre games you know between the original dota and now here's the storm and everything in between i feel like uh making guides of that is really important and i want to teach new people how to do it and i want to make guides for people who already know this genre but don't necessarily know these characters by making the character guide so it's going to be widespread. You're going to see, uh, on average, two uh, character guides a month, hopefully, depending on if I can uh, master characters that, that quickly. I mean, I'm going to be getting a lot of games in, so you'll be seeing those uh, that amount of uh, character guides per month, hopefully. Uh, that's the goal I'm shooting for. There might be a few, uh, few more to start out with, because I have characters mastered already, so I've got a backlog. But, uh, you know, with the... the map guides those will kind of all come out at once you won't really see those monthly you'll see them as we get new maps and with the other guides thrown in i'll just kind of put those out so you'll probably see roughly anywhere from two to seven heroes of the storm videos a month which isn't bad uh i'm hoping not to flood the channel with them and i'm hoping not to base my channel my entire channel off of them like uh star wars for example did that for me. I, I put a lot of my videos into Star Wars, and when I did that, when I cut the ties and I said, "Oh, well, I'm not going to be playing Star Wars anymore," it was a bit uh, it was a bit painful watching the amount of subscribers drop. But we have more than made up for that as of now. We have uh, viewers that watch everything that we have, and not just one video, which is a smart way to do your channel. So I'm gonna make sure that I don't base the entire channel on Here's the Storm. So there'll be plenty of stuff there for you to watch if you're not into this game. Um, but if you are, then there'll be just enough there to keep you interested in it. So perfect. I just wanted to put this video out just to save this kind of stuff, just give you guys an idea of what's to come because they are going to be coming really soon. Like I'm going to have at least a couple videos uh, in the next two weeks. And it's going to be maybe a little off-putting for people who don't watch this video and they just think that I'm going to go heavy into Here's the Storm, but trust me, I'm not. There's other videos for you. I already have two weeks of videos recorded for the rest of our stuff, so we're, we're good. You're going to have plenty of other content to watch if you don't want to watch this stuff. But I think that pretty much summarizes everything I need to be saying here. I, I do really look forward to playing this game more. I want to get into the competitive scene of it because... I'm that kind of guy. I've mentioned this before that I'm a competitive person, and this game helps fulfill that uh, desire for me to be competitive. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the new stuff that they're adding into the game. It's just going to get better and better because it's just going into closed beta, and it's already really, really good. So I, I can't wait. It's going to be so good. But with that being said, we shall see you guys next time.